Katie O'Neill Tran, business and trademark attorney. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming up today. Oh, no. Have me over. Yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's jump right in. You are an attorney, and um, was this your lifelong dream? Were you like, were you, were you condemning and judging your siblings or friends at a young age, or is this was this later on? Uh, no, this was from a very young age. I was very argumentative as a child and okay. opinionated, and so my parents were, you know, you should be an attorney, <laughs> and they kind of put that in my head. I was actually a business major in college, though, and then switched, switched to journalism, and one of my professors was a lawyer, journalist, and so I thought, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go back into the law angle. And the journalism really helps because of writing. I do a lot of writing. And so I went back into the law focus and stuck with it, though I actually wanted to be more of a constitutional attorney. Mm. But that is not very lucrative. <laughs> and you typically end up being a professor or something along those lines. And... I uh, graduated during the recession and went into commercial litigation and then started working with businesses and really, really enjoyed working with businesses, not the litigation part. So I switched eventually over to transactional and intellectual property law, and that's where I've been ever since. Interesting. Yeah. And you were, you started off with bigger firms, and you've mentioned you've been, you've been in a couple of places around the country? Yeah. So I've been in New York, um, was there, that was my first job as an attorney, was in New York, and then I went over to Ireland, and I was there with one of the bigger firms there doing commercial litigation with uh, investment funds and Bank of Ireland, and then came back to Chicago and worked for a small firm in Chicago and met my husband, and he's from California, and so he <laughs> found me out here. <laughs> so I've been in California for a little over five years now. Yeah. So New York to Petaluma. Mm, okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> a little bit different. Don't see too many skyscrapers around here. <laughs> no, it's really nice. Yeah, tell us. What was your? No, a lot of people fall, go to New York, fall in love with it. What? Um, why didn't you stay in New York? It just um, seems to grab a lot of people, especially when they're younger. Yeah, I'm from Michigan, so I'm used to open spaces, mm -hmm. and New York is the complete opposite of that, mm -hmm. and you, know, you have to look up to see the sun, so I didn't love New York. I loved Brooklyn, which is where I was living at the time, mm -hmm. um, and that's just because I was next door to a park, and it was wide open, and so I was done with New York after a little over a year. I was ready to move on, and I got this opportunity in Ireland, and my dad's from there, so I have a lot of family there. And I was going to ask I, you, how close to Ireland is O'Neill? Is it like, you know, is it oh, first, yeah. fourth, <laughs> tenth generation? We're all there. So oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so, for being from Boston, I, just, I know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people I would know that are similar, you know, one or two generations from, right. from Ireland. Yeah. yeah. So his whole family is there. It's just him over here. Ah. And so I, we've gone back and forth my whole life and got an opportunity to go there uh, to work. And so I did that, and I got a master's while I was there in wow. EU law. And so I really enjoyed that. I was there for a little over three years. And, and you mentioned with that, with that EU law master's, mm -hmm. you're, you have the capability of, of doing some international stuff, mm -hmm. especially when I pertains to maybe EU particularly? Yeah, so I do uh, EU trademarks and uh, I work with international companies and do a lot of work with some stuff, with some companies in Dublin that are based in Dublin. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, yeah. They remember you, I get a good reputation. It's handy. Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So does that, into that whole, like, it, it, it's a long trip from here. I mean, it is. You have to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, a 10 hour flight. I, it's well ingrained because I just got back. I Wednesday. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's where you yeah, were. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, but it's a small community. So, you know, you hope that they remember you and remember you fondly or else it's not going to go over well because everybody knows everybody. Yeah, it's, it's a very small country and it's a very small <laughs> city. Very <is> right. <laughs> yes. close. Yeah, I know. I've only been there once. It was, it, was, it was nice, but definitely not many people running around. No. All, all that open space. You know? yes. <laughs> it's awesome. And so you came back and then uh, made the decision in Chicago or here after you, like your husband dragged you back here, when, when did you decide my own little firm, you know, focus, you know, this, this micro kind of focus, when did, when did that, when did that happen exactly? 
So, so I was working for a small firm in Chicago and my husband, like I said, he's from here. And so I moved out here and I was still working for that firm just remotely. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of what I do, I can do remotely. Um, and I had my daughter and it was kind of, I didn't really want to go back to work for someone for a while. And I always kind of had it in my head, like, I can do this. I mean, I worked for a small firm there and I've seen how it's done and I know I could do it. Um, and after about seven months of being home with my daughter, I was done being home with just <laughs> my daughter <laughs> and was aching to go back to work, you know, had the itch um, and decided, okay, that I'm going to, I'm going to take the leap and start my own and looked into the insurance and all of those and got every, all my ducks in a row and got together and spoke to the woman who owns the firm in Chicago and we have a good relationship. And so she still hires me to do their trademark work and everything. So, oh, great. um, yeah, she just hires my firm now instead of me as an employee. So yeah, it worked, it worked well and it's worked well. Like I really enjoy it and I'm really glad that that was the decision that I made, you know, it's had its ups and downs, but it's, it's been really good. Yeah, first I had a website built that I liked and was happy to give people in my business cards design that I was happy to give people. Um, but I really started networking. I just joined networking groups, um, you know, similar to BNI type, the Business Networking International type group. Um, so I, the Chamber of Commerce, joined the board of the History Museum, and that's because that's I found things that interest me along with things that are more business oriented and just became involved in both. And as things have progressed, I've let things go to the wayside that I don't find as useful or as interesting, but I really like to give workshops. So I, volunteer, I started volunteering for that, and then that kind of snowballed and now people ask me to do workshops and ask me to speak at things, which is really nice because then I don't have to send out the cold call emails basically saying, hey, can I, can I talk? Um, so, you know, it's just been a lot of saying yes to things um, and just packing my calendar and organizing, making sure that someone's there to watch the kids and, <laughs> and then just going out and doing it. And then as I've grown, I've had to change my software and make sure that the, the administrative stuff is in order because at first it was just really simple. Um, you know, not, not a lot of money invested in that end. And as I've grown, I've had to do that, which has made it a lot easier. It's made things much more efficient. So, you know, billing and keeping track of documents and all of that, it's all in a law firm now system. Um, mm. So yeah, I just kind of grown naturally and had to take the time to sit down and assess, okay, where, where am I spending all my time and is it worth it? Um, doing that kind of kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> It's been organic. It is. It's been very organic. <laughs> and good. It's nice. It's, it's definitely the more people I meet, I find that mm -hmm. the more business just comes and it's natural. Um, mm. I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> I've never been good at that. And it's just not how I run it. And I, and it, it's worked for me. Um, businesses that are really, really customer facing um, or are putting out a product and they have their product under a name, a brand name, they're, they really should be looking into um, what name they're gonna be using and they should have a list of different names before they actually form that, their marketing strategy basically and putting their, spending a lot of money on a particular name because you might have a great name and it's perfect for what you want to do, but someone else may have also thought of that name. And so the worst thing that can happen is a company pours a lot of money into marketing for a new brand or their new company. And then they find out that that name is taken and they actually can't use it because it's the, the name is being used in a similar um, channel of trade basically. Mm -hmm. And so that's really hard for people and because they've become very attached to the names that they've created. And so it's just, it's really nice when they've had a list and they've done the, the due diligence in the background and they can use that name and we can easily get a trademark and it's a strong trademark and they can go forth and conquer basically with, with their name. 
So, I mean, there's some businesses, trademarks aren't as important as particularly if it if it's a small, um, uh, like a professional, um, where you're just using your name, mm -hmm. basically your sole proprietorship, and, or you're not, you're just working basically off of your name. Um, other than that, trademarks are, they, they, it's a really good for anyone. Um, anyone who's gonna build a brand based upon their company name or their what they're using for their customers to associate their either service or product with. Um, it's important to, to look at trademarking it and what the different options are. You don't always have to file at the federal level. You can file at the state level. If you're going to be very local, then we would file at the state level. But yeah, I recommend most business owners looking at, at least looking at trademarks and whether or not it's right for them. And it's not that expensive. No. I mean, that's people think of copyright, you know, I mean, well, probably, be, probably because the, the fines for violating some of these things are so big, maybe people think the cost to put it in place is big, but it really isn't. Right. It's actually one of the best protections at the most cost-effective price. I just, that's why I am always encouraging people to look at trademarks and copyrights because they really are cheap for what the protection is that they grant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible. So the price of a trademark, the government fees run anywhere between 225 to 400, but the 400 price is um, usually with a paper application. So most people aren't going to do that. They're going to file online, and so they're going to be paying either 225 to 275 mm -hmm. per trademark per class. Um, so it can be more expensive if they have offer a lot of different goods or services and they have to file in multiple classes. But the majority of people are only filing in one or two classes. And so they, their government fee is, is low. Multiple classes, is that, I'm a bit ignorant on this stuff, is that typically a service mark and not a trademark? So do you trademark like the name of, what, what, if you, what's your business name? Your business name is trademarked, right? And maybe a slogan is service marked or something like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Allstate, you're in good hands. Is you're in good hands a service mark or is that a trademarked cop? What, what is that? So, <laughs> well, so this is a very common question. Yeah. Um, so your business name isn't always your trademark. So you could be, you could have a business name that you're operating, that, that, that you're that you're not operating under right. that you're actually you're so you're actually doing business under something else so say my company's name is O'Neill Tran Law but my product is being sold under KOT and so KOT is what is the the customer facing and that's what customers are associating with me mm -hmm. so I'd want to trademark KOT I really probably wouldn't trademark the name of my actual company um, so that's how that would work. And then as far as trademark versus service mark, the difference is services are services that are being provided. So like a restaurant or a hotel. Um, a, a trademark are goods. So it's like dog leashes or um, you know books or anything really. Um, that's really the only difference is in the classes, class numbers. So you as someone who's going to file a trademark, you don't really need to be concerned about that. Um, to the Allstate question, that's a slogan, and it depends what it's associated with. So it's typically associated with a service. So yes, it would be a service mark, but it's it's still it's trademarked. Um, you would trademark it with the USPTO. Okay. That's 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 a, that's a really that's a really good education, and um, um, because you know again you think like okay, what are all these things? Because and then can somebody who has not filed well, first off, that might be confusing copyright law with trademark stuff, but mm -hmm. if you write something original, is there just a kind of an understood copyright on that? Like if you, let's say you put in, you wrote something on your website and it was totally, you wrote it, it's not, it's not copied from anywhere else. And mm -hmm. you just say at the bottom, you know, copyright 2019, you know, Katie O'Neill Trent. Is that, that's cool to do? Yeah. Okay. So do you have to put that down there to claim the copyright? Like if you never put that copyright on the bottom, could someone use your stuff with, with, I guess not safe with impunity, but would they be less likely to get in trouble for for um, using your stuff? No, it's still yours. So you, mm -hmm. a, co a copyright attaches, common law copyright attaches as soon as something is published mm -hmm. um, or is in a tangible fixed medium. Uh, you do not need to put the copyright notice on. At one point you did. Um, <clears throat> 
However, it's not registered, so you don't have the access to the courts and the statutory damages that you would if you went and registered that. Uh, and in, in this instance, that what you're describing is a copyright. It's not a trademark. It's a, the, it's a, it's like artistic work in a fixed tangible medium is, <laughs> yeah. is what they describe it as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you know, you've written something out, your website content, and then you would want to go and register that if if it was something that someone was going to potentially pick up and use um a lot of things aren't copyrighted they're not registered um it's not that they're not copyrighted they're just not registered with the copyright office mm -hmm. because they change people change the content of their website all the time and they just don't think it's worth right. it but you do have a copyright protection no matter what it's just what damages and how you can go about get, obtaining those damages it depends on whether or not you've registered it Uh, a lot of times what I see happens with my clients is that their websites are basically scra like scraped. Um, and so this other website will appear and it has some of the content and it's just to get clicks or ads, you know. And so what we do is we send what's called a DMCA takedown notice to the actual serve, the, the host of that website and typically it's taken down. Um, so it's pretty easy and nobody goes to court. Um, mm. That's just really simple day-to-day -day, uh, things that occur on a fairly regular basis. And that would be, that's the C circle. What is the, mm -hmm. what is the R circle? Like, you know? So that's trademark. And that that's a means, okay, that's yeah. a trademark. Okay, R, okay. That means that you've actually registered your trademark with registered the USBTO. Okay. And that's when you're allowed to use the R with the circle around it. If you have not registered your trademark with the USPTO, you cannot use that. Okay. You can use a TM, and that's the common law indicator of a trademark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. See, this is stuff that I don't think a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people, some of them might want to just think and say, wow, Chris is an idiot. But they don't, no. a lot of people might not know this stuff. A lot of people don't know. I get these questions a lot. <laughs> and you have to have a, a registered copyright to use the C with the thing? I'm no. Because a lot of people throw that on there themselves. You Which know, you can. That you, okay. Yes. It's the, so R. It's the R. Don't use the R. Yes. Okay. Keep away from the R. Okay. Yes. So this is good. So we, know, we got a good law lesson now. Uh, I think eventually I would like to hire uh, some interns and then potentially associates. I do, would, I would like to grow and see it growing into a bigger firm than just myself. Uh, it takes time, obviously, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's that's the goal. That's where we're headed. Well, most so. of you see in law firms, those people are dead. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. you, know, it's, you know, it takes some time. <laughs> yeah. They didn't build it up to the 500 lawyers you see running around downtown New York office. Yeah. But that's pretty exciting. Yeah, at first I would stick with business and trademark law. Um, maybe bring in a patent attorney because I don't do patents, and it mm. is it does go hand in hand with what I do. Mm -hmm. Eventually, as we grow, we probably bring in complementary areas, um, maybe tax and estate. But that's really it. I don't see it going any further than that. Um, you know, unless we get to the five hundred person level, in which case I probably won't be around to see it. So, <laughs> but you're um, the, yeah, maybe, it will be there. Maybe your daughter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> will be, be the partner. You know, she'll yeah. be like eighty five years old, saying, "My mom's got yeah. It's kind of exciting to think about, you know. Exactly. I would say go out and talk to people, get involved in the community, get your name out there. Um, just as much as you can, it's not a waste of time. That's where your business is gonna come from. It's gonna come from word of mouth. That's, I mean, the internet is great, but you're competing with much larger firms who have a lot more money than you to spend on their digital marketing. And so you just need to get out and talk to people um, and become the go-to person in your field. That other people who work with you, who other attorneys refer you know, they ask you questions. Um, you want to become that person, and there's all sorts of opportunities to do that. You have to get involved with your local bar associations, get on the committees, um, take any opportunity that comes your way that's in your field and your area that interests you. Don't spread yourself too thin trying to get into different areas. Uh, I find that to be too difficult. I, there's so much information in just the areas that I'm involved in. I can't imagine trying to look into say a state law like that's it's there's so much <laughs> information in that so you just don't want to spread yourself too thin and you want to really get uh get talking to people and make sure you are the expert
That's awesome. So stay focused. Make sure you're out there marketing people. Don't spend all day on your website. Uh, <laughs> maybe hire someone else to do that. Yes. Oh, yes. Get out there and make sure other people know you exist in a big way, and then, then things will roll for you. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Um, so I have a two-year-old and mm -hmm. my husband works in the city. Ooh. So um, it's a 45 minute minimum commute, um, depending on when he's leaving or coming home. So I am her primary caregiver. I, it is a lot of work. Um, she goes, she's in school four days a week. She goes, um, which is really helpful. So I got her into that when she was about 20 months old, which was very hard, but it's been, it's been good. Um, before that we had a part-time nanny and we still use our nanny. Um, I just have good childcare people that I vetted and we've just learned to trust. Um, they've been with her for, since she was six months. Um, so that's been really helpful. We don't have any family here. So, you know, if you have family, then use them. Um, <laughs> but it's free. Yeah, exactly. And you trust them, right? You would hope. Um, yeah. So it's just trying to make sure that you have someone who can watch them. And then if you don't, then you just need to say, I like, we're going to have to meet at this point or at this time or just rearrange your schedule so that you can that you can spend the time with your kids. I mean, why I do this is because I get to spend a lot of time with my daughter. I mean, it's great. I have my company and then I get to pick my daughter up from school every day at three and it's amazing. So I won't be able to do that for ever. Um, so I really like it. And one day a week I don't work and I spend time with her and we get to do the zoo and all of that. So it's just balancing it and it's hard. <laughs> but it's doable. It's definitely doable. It's just, it's just takes more struggling, you know, not struggling, sorry, juggling yes. and making sure everything's organized. We have a big calendar at home. Everything gets <laughs> written down, you know, where I'm going to be, where my husband's going to be and who's going to watch, <laughs> who's going to watch Kira. So yeah, it's good. Oh, that's great. Well, listen, uh, Katie, thanks for sharing today. Um, Katie O'Neill Tran from O'Neill Tran Law in Petaluma, and we're going to have on the bottom of this video, we'll have links to your website and and uh, and such. And um, appreciate it. if anybody has any questions for Katie, you'll be able to contact her oh, yeah. through that website. And have any questions about uh, any kind of legal question, she's there too. So thanks so much for uh, joining us today, Katie. Thank you for having me. This was fun. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks so much. <laughs>